welcome to Freaky Fauna Friday, where every Friday we take a little time and explore some of the freaks of nature from around the planet we cherish so deeply. So please, jump aboard and let's explore the wilds together. Ah, welcome back to Freaky Fauna Friday. I'm the great and peaceful Mr. E. And I'm just Jay. <laughs> and we're going to talk about some amazing freaks of nature. Absolutely. Today's freak actually has been covered on Crips of Corn podcast many times. He's actually on the new t-shirt. A familiar friend, you might mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. The elephant seal. Ooh. I was going to try to do an elephant noise, but... They don't even sound like elephants. Yeah. We'll get to why they're called elephant seals. I also didn't want to blow out your headphones. Uh, it's, I got mine turned down to normal. You've, oh, okay. I, the first episode with Jay's new headphones in three years. Yeah, I can actually hear in both years. In three years. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> I can actually hear. You don't have to fiddle with them. Uh, elephant seals. There are several subspecies, but we're going to kind of cover them as a whole for this episode. Okay. Because there's northern elephant seals and southern elephant seals. Oh, two varieties, huh? Yeah, because they they live everywhere. Like that, just but they are they don't cross the equator a ton. So the two groups are genetically distinct enough to be called subspecies. Okay. But not genetically distinct enough to be called different species. Different creatures, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, there is a little bit of, of the interchanging of genetics. Uh, but big mammals like that really don't like to spend a lot of a time at the equators. Okay. And it's just due More to, rare than... It's due to blubber, right? They're heavily insulated animals. Right. So being around the equator, they end up burning a lot more calories than they want to. They get overheated very easily. That and blubber that melts. Stuff. Yeah, uh, but these guys are awesome. Northern elephant seals, southern elephant seals. Their lifespan is right around in the wild. Uh, some of the oldest ones we've seen are between 22 and 25 years old, mm. uh, which is pretty impressive with how rigorous of a lifestyle these guys have. Yeah. Uh, these are titans. These are battle-hardened animals. Uh, these guys rip each other apart for territory. Um, you want to guess their weight? Um, 6,000 pounds. Pretty close, You're pretty close, up to eleven thousand pounds. Oh, I'm not even. Ha- I'm about halfway there. On average, though, adult males are between two and a half and three tons. Oh, so I was pretty close. So yeah, you wow. got the average weight of an All adult right. male. But they have. There are elephant seals that have been accurately weighed up to eleven thousand pounds. Dang. I think if they had that that game at the carnival, you know, where you guess your weight, but with just random animals, I'd probably do pretty good. People don't get how heavy that is. It's it's massive. Uh, people, don't, you, you, there's very few places anymore in the world where you can see good elephant seal colonies. Okay, uh, which we've talked about in groups of corn that they were almost hunted to extinction when whales were at, during the whaling empire. Uh, when whales were getting hard to come by, mm-hmm. they moved on to elephant seals. Jeez. Because they were the next biggest thing. Right, yeah. And so elephant seal colonies got decimated. They're now, we'll talk about it, most of these colonies are bouncing back uh, fairly well, but there are still some struggles. But you imagine, see, so that estimate of 11,000 pounds is an accurately weighed male we'll talk about. But could you imagine seeing 11,000 pound seal? I can't. I, I literally cannot picture it in my head. Rhinos, four to 5,000 pounds. Hippos, six to 7,000 pounds. So the average elephant seal is the size of a big hippo. That's so big. And we're yeah. talking males. There's sexual dimorphism. Okay. The female elephant seals just look like normal little seals. They're not little, but when you're comparing them to a 20-foot long, 11,000-pound <laughs> animal. That's little, oh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, they can get 20-foot long. Jeez. So they're up there with some of the biggest great white sharks. Okay. And that's probably why they're that big. What to, to uh, battle with them or yeah, to, just to, to, uh, we talked about this several times evolving out of the food chain. Right, too big to bother. Yeah. So elephant seals do get preyed upon by orcas and great whites. Uh, adult males are very rare for either animal to really target. Okay. And it's because elephant seals have massive canines. It's hard to see underneath their proboscis, their big inflated nose, but they they're battle hardened. So when you see orcas trying to hunt one of these guys, yeah, the problem with seals with orcas, is they can turn around really fast. So they can bite in the eyes, they can bite on the snout, then they can bite on the sensory disc mm, in the heads. Mm, okay. So for little seals, you know, they take their tail and they whip them just to kill them before they get really close to them. With the, uh, a seal that's, you know, almost your same size, it's very hard to do that with. Tail whips, not effective. And they're very maneuverable in the water. Mm-hmm. Don't let their size fool you. They, they are very quick and very easily maneuverable. 
Well, much more in the water than they are on land. A hundred percent. They can move fast on land. Yeah. You'll be surprised how quick they can get going. Oh, man. Elephant seals are larger marine mammals that are the largest living carnivores in their family group. And they can weigh up to 11,000 pounds. Elephant seals are classified under the pinniped family. Ooh. So pinnipeds are? Uh, like elephant seals. Uh, seals, sea lions. Sea lions. Yep, yep. All uh, them. Those are, I think, the two major groups that are left. There were, there's several extinct pinniped groups, which actually is coming up on Cryptids of the Corn in a couple months. Mm. It's on the schedule. All right. In Latin, it means father or fin-footed. Fin-footed. Pen, pinniped. Okay. Uh, both because a lot of them have mustaches. Oh. They have the thick, brussel mustaches. So the family group's kind of named after, like, they always look like your uncle or your dad or something like that. Like Jamie Heineman always got called a walrus. Right, yes. Because they have the same mustache. Mm-hmm. Uh, both species, the northern elephant seals and the southern elephant seals, were hunted to the brink of extinction by the oil industry at the end of the 19th century. But for the most part, a lot of these colonies have recovered or are in the process of moving back into old habitats and territories. Oh, good. That's good news. So, uh, yeah, they are diurnal. They are not nocturnal. So diurnal means? Uh, That they're awake during the day. Yeah, they're active during the day. And sleeping at night. Yes. Yes. They are carnivores, pescivores, uh, molluscivores. They eat mollusks? They eat a lot of mollusks. Oh, okay. So they're actually, their jaws and their face, they dive down like elephants, not elephants, the walruses, the other big pinniped, which is not even close to the size of an elephant seal. Right. But their jaws are specifically, you know, for going down and getting a lot of mollusk. Hmm. But elephant seals eat a lot of fish, too. Any questions so far? Uh, not questions, but just one statement that, you know, it's pretty bad when you run out of whales. When you run out they of the biggest to, thing ever, you got to go hunt the next. <laughs> biggest thing ever for just their oil. Just to melt them down for candles. Yeah. Elephant seals are considered a true seal. They do not exhibit external ears or reduced limbs. Huh. So do you know the difference between a seal and a sea lion? I guess I don't. Ears. Really? Is that it? That's one of the that's one of the big ones. One of the indicators. Yeah. And then uh so elephant like so seals have uh like flippers, their tail is more reduced. So, you know, that's actually like a uh it's actually like a tail fluke. Okay. If you look at like something like a California sea lion, their back flippers and their front flippers they can still stand up on. There if you look at their back flippers, they can walk on them like feet. Oh, okay. Seals can't do it. True seals can't do that. Okay. True seals, like, it's just a big flipper, never, essentially. Never noticed that, that. Or Sea lions have external ears. Okay. Seals do not. Okay. So when you're looking at them, like a leopard seal, that's why it's not a sea lion. Because that confuses a lot of people, because people think it's more of a predatory nature. Yeah. Like, cause see, like leopard seals eat a lot of m- mammals and birds and that kind of stuff. Which okay. Which is odd for, a, like, a seal or a sea lion. So it's not anything to do with that. It's the limb structures and the external ears versus internal ears mm. or just having a hole. Okay. Uh, the reduced limbs help them with more streamline and move easily in the water. So that's kind of the big difference. That makes sense. It's seals are spending most of their time in the water, even yeah. though they're both most of their time in the water. But sea lions spend a great deal of time on land. Okay. Uh, like they're always beached. They're always laying out. Elephant seals will spend tons and tons and tons of time out in the open ocean. It's very rare for, like, a California sea lion to do that. Mm, okay. It's not great. That makes sense, though. So. Yeah, so that's just some big differences between seals and sea lions. Hmm. Uh, however, it makes navigating on land extremely difficult. They cannot turn their high limbs or flippers to walk like others in the sea lion family. So, like, they can't really – their tails are just tails. Their their the back feet are just tails, just essentially, at this point. Basically for swimming. In addition, their hind flippers of elephant seals have a lot of surface area. This helps them propel in the water – but can stagger them on land. Mm-hmm. Sexual dimorphism in the species is extreme, with male elephant seals weighing up to... 11,000 pounds. Which is 10 times more than most elephant seal females. Oh, those poor females. Yeah. They have this purport... They have a really, really prominent proboscis. I like that word. You said, it, er- you said it earlier. It almost made me laugh. It's nose. Yeah. Elephant seals make their name from their large proboscis of the adult males, the bulls. Uh, reminiscent of elephant trucks. So that's kind of where they get their name. And they don't have that nose all the time. What is it? Like a... They inflate it. Oh, okay. Like a turkey with its... Uh, what's kind that called? Of, a snoot? It's a snoot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, snood. 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 Okay. Uh, no, because turkeys use blood and muscles to pull out. Like elephants mm. will actually inflate it. Oh, like with air? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a nasal cavity. 
Wow. Okay. Uh, and they use it. They flush it with blood and everything like that too. Yeah. But it's like it's just a big. It's almost but like a balloon. Similar idea, right? Similar yeah, concept. It's the, same, it's the same concept. Yeah. It's just on a mammal, not mm-hmm. a, a sea mammal. The bull's proboscis is used to produce extremely loud roars of dominance. It's a resonating chamber, mm. especially during the mating season. Uh, more importantly, however, the nose acts as a sort of rebreather. Filled, or filled this cavity is designed to reabsorb moisture from the exhaling. This is important during the mating season when the seals do not leave their beach to feed and they have to conserve body moisture because there is no incoming source of water. Wow. So they're using their nose to retain the moisture from their breath on the way out? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And there's several like stag antelopes. They have the big noses. They do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's a water catching system. Huh. Because they do not drink seawater. That's it. Right. They only get their water from the food they eat. Interesting. So during the breeding season, these what the, you know, kings of the beach, they have thousands or hundreds, sometimes thousands of females that you know is they're running in there. If they leave, other males will come in and breed their females. Okay. So he will spend the entire breeding yep. season. Just, he ain't moving. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't eat. Yeah. So they Dedicated. have to have this to pull in to keep moisture. Um, that's just me. I just read something that maybe you can confirm if it's true or not. Uh, kind of on the subject, but uh, out at sea, you know, the lack of fresh water. Um, I read like after a rain or something, fresh water does not mix with seawater very well. It'll sit on top. Yeah. So there'll be like little pools of fresh water. And they said, look for the sea turtles. Yeah, they'll drink it. They'll drink it. Uh, sea cows will do it too. Yeah. Uh, manatees. So that's a real thing? Yeah. Ah, so a little survival tip. Yeah. If uh, you're you stranded do, at sea, look for the sea turtles. Vertebrates. Vertebrates. Do not drink salt water. Right. Yeah. It's very, I mean, there's several examples, like kind of, this is off topic. There's several vertebrates that kind of do, kind of don't. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at marine iguanas, they drink a lot of seawater on accident. Okay. So they actually have specialized glands in their respiratory system. Filter that out. To or remove the salt. Yeah. And that's why their face is always crusted in like white crystals. Huh. That's them squirting salt, salt out, out of their nose. That's pretty cool. Out of their diet. Uh, so yeah, what that is I'll... correct. They, they do, it will mix eventually. Right. Uh, the big thing is temperature difference too. Oh, uh, okay. So it's salinities, you know, a little bit. Like the oceans themselves are different salinities. Right. So you ever seen where two oceans butt up? And they don't mix. They don't mix for a while. Right, They'll yeah. start to mix. But yeah. What, now I got to find. Uh, the northern and southern elephant seals can be distinguished by the various external features. On average, a southern elephant seal tends to be much larger than the northern species. Adult males belong to the or adult males belonging to the northern species tend to be or tend to have extremely large proboscis and thick chest areas with a red coloration compared to the southern species. So mm. bigger noses is northern, bigger bodies is Southern. southerns. Yeah, which makes sense if you look at the oceans uh, in the Arctic and subarctic regions they live in. Uh huh. Like Antarctic is the. It's south, but yeah. no and bears. The, and the Arctic is northern hemisphere yeah. with bears. Yeah. Which I, these are probably the only seals that polar bears really can't get a hold of. Yeah, probably not. Uh, I mean, they, they, they could. eat belugas and stuff, but these guys are a lot bigger than I think people realize. Yeah. Because they're like, uh, you know, this here's seal, and you've seen sea lions, you've seen seals in the zoo and stuff like that. That would be one heck of a interesting battle to watch. Though. It wouldn't be. You don't think so? An adult elephant seal versus a polar bear? Yeah. A polar bear, if it was very determined, it would get murdered. Polar bear? Yeah. Oof. Because these guys have crushing bites we'll talk well, about. Yeah. And just gigantic. And you're not, it's going to, the polar bear, what they normally do is they pin and bleed out. Oh, they can't, seals. they can't do that. If these. it's a 20 foot long seal that weighs 11,000, they can't. Pin if it. you see them when they hunt walruses, yeah. They, it's very hard for them to hunt a walrus, which is many, many times smaller than an adult elephant seal mule. So they have to like get them by the back of the neck and hold them there until they bleed out. Jeez. And then, or they try to cut down to vitals. Right. Yeah. It's very hard. It's a very hard thing for them to kill walruses. Ugh. If they do kill walruses, it's just very hard. Right. Yeah. An elephant seal is a whole different animal. Whole different story. Uh, so, like I said, that the northern species bigger nose, red color, large probos or, or that large nose. The southern species is just much larger. Smaller proboscis. <laughs> Females do not have this large proboscis and be, can, can be distinguished between species by looking at the nose characteristics. Southern females tend to have smaller, blunt noses compared to the northern females. Because there is areas where these guys mix, like, mix, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll talk about it. These guys end up in the weirdest places. Yep. Elephant seals have been documented going up to several thousand miles upriver. Which is crazy. They've ended up in mountain streams. They've ended up in the wrong oceans. They ran up the wrong seas, inland, uh, fighting cars in inland Australia. 
chasing cows to try to mate with. <laughs> uh, these continents these guys show up on. Uh, all of them except Antarctica. Or no, are they there? They are. They are there? Okay. It's all of them. So all, it's all of them, yep. Mm-hmm. It's all of them. Subcontinents, they end up on all of them. Countries, just name one that has a coast. They're world travelers. Yeah. Uh, mostly, though, staying in the Atlantic and the Pacific. Okay. And if you look at that, the other oceans are just, like, have a lot more warm water than those two. So the Atlantic and the Pacific are the biggest oceans, uh, stretching all the way from top to bottom, essentially. Right, And yeah. these guys are kind of living on the, <clears throat> excuse me, living on the ends of those spectrums. Well, wouldn't the Arctic Ocean then be one? Like a big one that they're yeah. in? Okay. I'm just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, just, I get to the Indian Ocean. They're not as prevalent, I would assume. Yeah, it's like Indian Ocean and that kind of stuff. The Mediterranean yeah. Sea. But they have ended up there, but it's not a good place for them. Right, yeah. It's too warm constantly. Yep. Uh, the Northern Elephant Seals and up at the Pacific Coast of Mexico, the U.S. and Canada. Race Rock is the most notable breeding area on the Pacific Coast. In the southern end of Vancouver Island, the Straits of Juan de Funca, Fuca, the seals inhabit gravel and sandy beaches far from human activity. Uh, they prefer places, these are preferred places for breeding. The species as a whole kind of has a cultural memory of humans, and it's mm. not fair. It's not no, good. They do not like people. I don't think any species on Earth probably would. Uh, especially if you were burnt for oil almost to extinction. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a red flag there. Yeah, so the, like I said, elephant seals are almost gone. Uh, we talked about it recently on Australia that they inhabited pretty much the whole coastline of Australia. It's southern Australia is where they preferred. They could end up in northern Australia, but it's normally too hot in the mm-hmm. oceans. Uh, but coastline Australia had like a lot of people that lived there in the forties, fifties didn't even know there was elephant seals native to the out area. there. <laughs> they, they were supposed to. They, they were supposed to have elephant seals. Yeah, because they were all they were killed fifty years ago. Um. But yeah, they prefer these areas in breeding. When, a, uh, when at sea, males tend to feed on continental shelves, while the females prefer deeper ocean waters. Uh, southern elephant seals found on big and small islands along the coast of South Africa, New Zealand, Argentina, and Chile. During the breeding season, these seals are generally found on the rocky trains and beaches, and sometimes on snow and ice. They live in the open ocean during the non-breeding season. Mm, okay. so these guys are open ocean animals. Yeah, They can go months sometimes without ever touching land. I just imagine being out in the middle of the ocean and seeing one of these. A huge seal? I think it happens. Uh, the climate zones, these guys are go from temperate to cold. They can be found in tropical, but it's not normally what they like. Elephant seals, uh, elephant seals spend up to 80% of their lives in the open ocean. They usually only come to land to give birth, breed, and molt. They molt? Yeah, during the breeding season, they have giant chunks of their... Ex- their ex- it's actually fur. It's densely packed fur. But it's so dense, it actually looks like skin chunks coming off. Oh. Uh, but it's just fur. Okay. It's that makes been, a lot more sense. Uh, but yeah, they take this time to, because they they spend so much time in the open ocean, they need this dense layer of fur to survive. Right, yeah. So this is when they're coming onto land to breed, is the only time they're spending like a month and a half on land. So that's where they take that opportunity to molt. So they're not being vulnerable in the open ocean. Lose the old stuff and yeah. grow some new. Most of the time they are moving about, migrating, and foraging for food. Both males and females spend time at sea, but during their feeding ha- or but during their feeding habits and migration routes differ. Males will follow a route that is more constant, while females vary their route in pursuit of prey. So males are pretty like pretty set in their ways. They're they, like the shipping uh, lane of yeah. the ocean. Yeah, they are- they follow their same their same patterns every year. Yeah, the females will end up all over more. So are they the ones that end up in the streams and the the mountain no, it's streams? No, it's generally we'll talk about that. Okay. Oh, I can talk about it now. It's generally. Uh, bull, young bull males they mm. end up in the crazy places because okay. they don't have an established territory. So they're just so during breeding season they, they have the urge to come to land and establish somewhere on the beach, but it's called a beach master. So if there's already beach master that has you know a mile of beach, he's and, got his territory already yeah, claimed, and he's then they'll battle and they'll kill each other. They'll literally stand up to breed and they'll rear up 10, 12 feet and just slam each other and they'll use their tusk to dig into each other and rip chunks out of their necks and Ugh. they'll bite the noses off of other ones and stuff like that. What is it called again? A proboscis. Not their proboscis. Yeah, they'll bite they'll bite that right off and they'll blind <laughs> each other. And that those kind of fights are very rare because generally speaking after they slam into each other a little bit, that's it. They can tell who's bigger. Right, yeah. Cuz the weight is just pushing so much harder on the littler ones. Uh, so some males will, what's called sneaker males, they'll hang around the colonies on the edges and around the beach masters, maybe fighting a, a, another dominant male. 
they'll go in and breed as many females as they can. Sneaky. Others just like it depends on how good the beach master is. If he's murdering a lot of other competition, they just get they they have the the drive to be on land to try to breed. Yeah. But if they don't have places to go, that's when the ones that end up in the mountains end up in Australia. Gotcha. Because they're the sexually frustrated ones. You're right. Okay. They're not big enough to even deal with it. Like if you look at that one that's going into Australia, his nose is very small. And it's because he's a younger male, and it's because he gets bullied by the couple colonies that are there. Oh, uh, okay. But he's big enough to want a territory, but he's not big enough to take one yet. Understood, yeah. Any questions? Oh, no, not yet. But yeah, so males usually drive straight down on the ocean floor and stay at the bottom foraging and the, for benthic prey, so bottom-dwelling prey. While hunting in the dark depths, elephant seals seem to locate their prey, uh, at least partially, by vision. The bioluminescence of some prey animals can facilitate their capture. Elephant seals do not develop a system of echolocation in the manner of cetaceans, but use vibratious, which is the sense of vibrations through their whiskers. So it's not echolocation. They don't put it producing a sound and bouncing it back. They are actually using their faces to kind of feel the vibrations of prey. Okay. They have a social hierarchy during mating season, like I've already explained. The molting process also takes about a month to complete, so they do that during the mating season. Uh, literally, you'll see giant chunks of what looks like flesh coming off them. Their group names are pods, bobs, harems, herds, rookeries, or colonies. Nice. Okay. Bobs. Bobs. Mm. Like I said, they're uh, they're carnivores, pescivores, molluscivores, mostly eating rays, skates, squids, octopus, eels, small sharks, large fish. Uh, these guys have been seen eating like tuna and that kind of stuff. About everything. In and huh? they eat up to six to seven foot long sharks. Jeez. I mean, it makes sense. They're huge, but yeah, that's impressive. Uh, our polygamous. Their mating season, depending on where you're at in the world, is either December and March or August and November. Pregnancy, uh, if you're depending on which subspecies, is seven to nine months or 10 to 11 months. They normally only have one pup. They are independent after 27 days. What? They have to be. Like, they Keep mine. They breed for a month. Right. When they produce the baby, and they, like, they have to be able to go to the open ocean very quick. They have some of the richest milk in the world. Uh, Oh, now we're talking. I love milk. It's just a weird thing to say. Uh, these guys put on a lot of weight every day. When when you say richest milk, what do you mean by that? Like, like nutrient dense? It's hyper dense. It would actually probably it'd probably kill us. Oh, we gotta get a shot of it at least. <laughs> it probably it's uh to help put on the blubber. They're literally the females melt oh, down their blubber that to sounds get their babies ready in twenty seven days. Sounds amazing. So population trends. Uh, they are listed as stable. I kind of, and then least concerned is their uh, red list status. That's good. I kind of think it's a little premature. Yeah. Because uh, they are on the up, the incline. Right, right. But there are still much of their historic habitat they are not actively living in right now. Okay. So to me, it's, uh, I think it would be, I would put them as vulnerable personally, that they, if they, they can, be, they can slide back just as easily as they can slide forward. Right. If they're not taken care of and watched. Uh, but they were on the red list for a number of years. Uh, as it, well, endangered and then vulnerable. But yeah. Hmm. Any questions? I, I know this is a longer one, but these are really cool animals. Yeah, these are, I like this so far. Do you want to guess how deep uh, um, adult southern elephant seal has been recorded diving? I can't, it, I mean, they're big, but I can't manage it's too deep. Uh, 800 feet. It's a good guess. So besides cetaceans, so if we take out cetaceans, whales and dolphins, uh, whales and dolphins. Uh, these guys are the deepest diving mammals. Okay. Uh, one adult southern elephant seal male was dive, or, you know, he had a tracker on him, and he was recorded at this depth for an extended period of time. 7,835 oh. feet. What? A little over a mile. How is that possible? That's what they're designed for. I mean, I was not crushed. Like, that's, that's nuts. Uh, so when foraging, northern elephant seals have only been witnessed to dive on average, between 1,600 and 1,900 feet. But one was recorded at being at 4,900 feet and staying underwater for about an hour at that, t- at that depth. Do you know how they're, like, so big and bulbous from all that blubber? What if, like, they did get squeezed down down there and they looked like a normal seal? So it wouldn't be that crushed. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of these guys have all kinds of crazy systems. Yeah. Uh, like, from anything from, like, some whales, like, pressurizing their skin. Right, yes, that's... A the, crazy one. Most of these guys don't store oxygen in their lungs. If you hold your breath down in that depth, you'll explode. Right. Uh, what they do is they hyper-enrich their livers and their muscle tissues with oxygen, and they have collapsible chest. 
So they let all the air pockets get out of their body. Uh, so these guys are hyper adapted to this depth. That's crazy. So that's the elephant seals contain a lot of blood, which helps them stay at these depths for much longer periods. Like I said, these guys have been witnessed to be down there for about an hour. Some experts think they could be down for two and a half hours if they had to be. I wonder what they're doing down there. Feeding. Dang. Keep in mind, they don't, they can't see at that depth. No. So prey is, you know, hard. You imagine being in a sub over a mile deep. And a freaking elephant seal. And just seeing a 20 seal. foot seal come cruising by. <laughs> well, I think it was that sperm whale that, uh, did I ever tell you about that story? With the, these, it's like a four person rover. They were like, I can't remember if it's 11,000 feet. They're super deep. It may not have been that deep, but it may have been like eight or 9,000 feet. And they're in the dark depths. And all of a sudden, like, keep in mind, this just barely fits four people. Yeah. This massive head comes out of the darkness and bumps them. And they're like, what the heck is it? Like, they're freaking out because it's five, six, seven times wider than their sub they're in. Yeah. And it, and they go flying to the left and they couldn't see what hit them. It was an adult bull sperm whale. Oh, geez. And he could have killed them so easily. He could have ripped the tethers out. Yeah. And he just bumped him a couple times in his eye. He got up to him and was looking in and seeing people and... Then he just left. That's so crazy. All he wanted to see is what it was. I mean, he's down there hunting. So, you know, if he wanted, if he had the inkling to be a little more curious, yeah. he could have killed everybody in that sub on accident. Did they, did Not they, even be malicious, you know, just. Right. He's, he's 80 foot long. So, yeah, exactly. Swimming a little too hard. Mm -hmm. Do they have, they, they have their, are they the filter feeders? They have the teeth. They have the teeth. They're the biggest toothed whale. Okay, alive. that's what I thought. Yeah, no, they're active predators. They're yeah, eating, that's they're eating sharks and they're eating squid. That would be terrifying. They're eating things much larger than people. Right, much more larger than that sub. About the size of that sub. Oh, okay. So I could see him like literally just accidentally grabbing it. Yeah. And just destroying it on you know not being malicious. Just so my last little fact for you is even due to their massive size, most people think these guys are slow. They are not. On the contrary, these are extremely fast, accurate, maneuverable swimmers. If you see an elephant seal coming towards you from a distance, you should run away very quickly. As on sand dunes, they can move faster than the average human. Okay. So when they're running on sand, when they're when they're not running, but when they're hopping, they can move faster. They than can the... run or not run. They can move faster than the average human can run. Oh, it's almost hard to believe. And that's what that's what people get hurt with by them. Is they're like, look at that big fat seal. Right, yeah. And it's not fat. And here it comes. Well, I mean, it is. It, there's blubber. Yeah. But most of their weight is muscle. Yeah. Oh, man. Having that chase you down? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. So that's, I've seen that warning that elephants, like, there's literally signs, and I think it's Australia in some parts of California. Elephant seals are not slow. Yeah. They are not slow. Stay away. And beach masters are extremely territorial. Man, yeah, that's chasing And they don't down. like people. They don't like people for good reason. I was just saying, I wonder why. Uh, I mean, if, I guess if you want southern elephant seals, it's about 66, there's 664,000 of them. Um, and northerns, there's about 740,000 of them. Okay. So More know, northerns than the, yeah. than the southern so, counterpart. So recently, like I said, they've been demoted from threatened to least concern. So there you go. Elephant seals, a really cool animal. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, they just, they embody such a weird group of pinnipeds. Right, yeah. That they've gotten so huge. And there's only a couple of species of extinct pinniped that are even bigger than them. And a lot of the ones we're going to be talking about in the future in Crimson of Corn aren't, are about the size of them, but probably do not weigh as much. So that 20 to 22 feet long. Uh, there was one in a, a zoo that could talk and would do tricks. And I think London, uh, but he only liked one zookeeper. What was his name? We looked him up before. I think it was George or something like that. G Gregory. It, he had a he had a, a London name. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, he could talk a little bit, and he did tricks. And there's a video you can find it on YouTube. Yep, a black and white video. We watched it. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't look real because it looks like a, a semi truck is coming out of the water, and then <laughs> this little tiny guy. Which he's not. He's not a little tiny guy. He just looks like a little tiny guy. It's like has a ball and gives it to the seal, and he's doing tricks for the guy. And this, like, he hated every other person except that zookeeper. That's nuts. He bonded with that guy. And he was like, "That's that's my guy." Right. Yeah. All right. I have been the great and peaceful mystery, and I've been Jay. What's your words of wisdom into the weekend? I'm just. It's winter's coming up, and remember to just do your best to stay warm and. Give thanks to your uh, friends and family that are around. And it's that time of season to give thanks and just don't forget about that. So 
Uh, just enjoy your day and enjoy your weekend. Stay warm out there. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Freaky Five on a Friday. If you want to help the podcast grow, remember to share and give it a five-star review.